We need to talk about conservatism and human nature. Um, now, in my video, which was on the liberal essay, to what extent the liberals talk about the agree about the economy, I gave a long extended spiel at the beginning about why this question is straightforward, but perhaps not as easy as it might seem. And I would suggest if you haven't seen that video yet, go back and watch that video first to get that um, lengthy explanation. But in short, this is a nice, predictable, common style of question that you should be prepared for going into an exam. Great. It's a very clear question. There's no hidden tricks here going on. Um, so you shouldn't be kind of going, oh, well, what, is, what does this actually mean or anything like that? But it's narrow. It is only asking you about human nature. And so you need to find a way to expand this out to 24 marks. So it's going to be very easy for us to write paragraph one. It's not so easy for us to get paragraph two and paragraph three and to make a kind of an interesting kind of discussion in here. So um, it is it's, it's a double edged sword or whatever, you know, two sides of the same coin or yin and yang, uh, whichever. Choose, choose your own metaphor. Um, right. So let me just bring this text up a little bit so we can. So I can see it behind my head, basically. Uh, why can't I not get to my editor? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Okay. So, first of all, this is a very straightforward, do they agree about human nature or do they disagree um, about human nature um, debate? There's, there's no kind of hidden tricks here. But again, like I said with the previous essay on conservatism, and again, I would probably suggest watching that previous essay on conservatism first, because I go into a lot of detail about why conservatism is a very interesting essay ideology to write about. Again, the agreements here are nearly all between traditional and one nation, and the disagreements are nearly always with the new right. And what I mean by that is basically you're going to be saying traditional and one nation conservatives agree there is agreement between these threads about blah, 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 blah. But on the other hand, within the new right disagrees because on the other hand, blah, 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 blah. So your conclusion would probably make sense to say some forms of conservatism agree, but there's nearly always significant disagreement with the new right. You know, that, that's a quite standard conservative essay conclusion to be kind of heading for because the new right is so neoliberal in in many of its views it's 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 detached really from the other forms of conservatism and the fact that you've got three forms to talk about rather than two is nice because you can have two or two forms agreeing and one form disagreeing um, and you're still talking about agreements and disagreements so you could structure it in the not great way but straightforward way of agreements disagreements and then analysis so here are all the agreements between the sorry uh, here are all the agreements between um traditional conservatives and one nation conservatives and these are all the areas where the new right disagrees and then we need to talk about well what that means in terms of like is there agreement or disagreement or my favorite approach we go thematically and we take a particular idea and we talk about the agreements and disagreements and we kind of what i call snaking between agreements and disagreements which makes for a stronger essay overall usually because you've got more analysis and evaluation throughout rather than kind of saving it up to the end so i will always prefer this slightly harder but potentially better style which is where we go kind of theme by theme. And so you could start talking about human nature and imperfection, human nature about whether we are kind of born equal to one another, or and then human nature with individualism. And then you can have a shorter conclusion because in effect, you've already talked about agreement and disagreement as we go. Now, how do we make this essay long enough? I'm just going to move my little bald head to one side. How do we make this essay long enough when we only can talk about human nature? This goes for other topics as well. You can talk about how the beliefs in human nature lead to different beliefs in other areas like human nature and society and the economy and so on. So we can use phrases like, you know, they think this about human nature, so traditional conservatives believe, therefore, that blah, 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 blah. Whereas the one, whereas new right conservatives believe in this, which leads to a different attitude in society. But you, you have to start on human nature. And I, I was reading an essay the other day where, where the student started off, I think the question was about human nature or something like that. The student started off by talking about the economy and then tried to link that back to human nature. And it didn't really work because the, the question is on 
human nature. And so as the examiner, you're always thinking, you know, is this correct? Is it relevant? And it, so you have to be starting off your sections and your paragraphs for this essay by talking about human nature. But if you kind of say, well, they believe this about human nature and therefore this is what they then think about the society and the economy, um, as long as you don't then spend three hours talking about the economy and never mention human nature again, you know, that's fine. And that's how you bulk this up. You kind of, and I'll, I'll give an example here. So for example, um, the... Traditional conservatives have a, have a more negative view about human nature, um, therefore believe that the state needs to be more involved in kind of having an authoritarian state to kind of keep us under control, whereas the new right, um, neoliberals have a far more optimistic view about human nature, therefore, or this leads to, to using my phrase, belief in a far smaller state which maximises freedoms. And, and I would expand that out using kind of key thinkers and, and, and key terms. But in terms of a structure, do you see how I'm I'm talking about different beliefs in human nature? I'll use my keywords and then I will then say therefore. And this is how I make my sections go from three lines to ten. So just to move my head out of the way here. So I'll point down. So how do the beliefs about human nature impact impact society, state, the economy and the other key beliefs and concepts within conservatism but make sure you start with the human nature otherwise it will not be relevant and the examiner will have to kind of put a line through it and say you know it's correct but it's not relevant therefore it scores no marks so what are the agreements about human nature and most of these are between traditional conservatives and one nation conservatives they all believe to an extent that we ha there is human imperfection and you you're starting this essay off with Hobbes really aren't we and bringing in a few of his key ideas however other conservatives might modify that a little bit and kind of say, well, actually, we're fallible, not terrible. And we've got kind of oak shot there. So you, you, you can kind of play with this idea of agreement and disagreement and kind of say, well, they agree, but it's a development or a softening of these views. Um, they Therefore, they believe that human nature is such that it needs authority to enforce order upon us. And we, we, we need it. So human nature is such that we need this. So keep bringing it back to human nature. We need authority. We need hierarchy. You know, Hobbes in his writing is always talking about how um, there is a need for a sovereign ruler to protect us effectively kind of from ourselves. Um, there is a lack of rationality for most humans. Burke says this, he talks about the fact that human beings are not rational, or the vast majority of us are not rational, and therefore we need other people to make decisions for us. So there's a need for ruling classes. Note the, this leads to kind of impact. Um, oh gosh, lots of text there. Let me, let me move myself down. Ah! Uh, the One Nation conservatism perhaps would suggest that um, crime comes from a social need, not social disorder, and therefore discuss the responsibility of the, of the ruling classes. So, so here you, you perhaps got a slight difference with One Nation, but whereas, whereas when you're talking about human nature, um, traditional conservatives might kind of say, well, you're actually there, there's something kind of selfish and almost kind of criminal about us, uh, and I'm, I'm oversimplifying to kind of say, well, you know, there's this kind of negative view of human nature from traditional conservatives. One nation conservatives do soften and say, well, actually, maybe crime happens not because actually it's social disorder, like a human nature which is very rebellious, but actually just because there is a need. So we've got a slight change here, a, a development, and therefore um, there is more of a responsibility from the ruling classes towards the, the, the lower classes, and therefore, and note that this leads to, there is a need for pragmatism, tradition, stability, um, therefore, we reject ideology and the attempts to kind of make a perfect society because, uh, go back to my previous uh, essay plan, this is a very pragmatic, this is a very um, non-ideological ideology. Um, there is actually some agreement here, um, but with the new right as well. I was kind of pondering this and, 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 um, and, and reading about it. You know, they, they, there is, they both agree that there is a kind of moral imperfection um, in human beings, and therefore there is a need for traditional model moral values, um, and I've written that undermines social cohesion, but I should say that underlines or reinforces social cohesion, which comes from the neoconservative aspect. So you, so you can kind of say, well, human beings need a kind of, more, human nature is such that we need a kind of morality brought in by the state to kind of keep social cohesion social social traditions so social stability that's probably a good way of saying it um and that that would that would then lead them to things like traditional views on marriage um traditional view traditional institutions and things like that but remember always start with the human nature 
what does that lead to? But, of course, as always with conservatism, we then have the new right. The new right believe in rationality and therefore the individualism of human beings. Um, and you can bring in Anne, Anne Rand and, and Nozick here, of course, versus the more community-based organic society of traditional. So when you're thinking about structure here, you can very much kind of start from this idea. You can kind of go between, I personally would kind of snake between them. You know, on one side, you've got this organic society where we're all kind of interrelated to each other. You've got this necessary ruling class. But on the other hand, new, the the new right disagree because you, they believe actually human beings are rational and can better themselves and can Im, um, improve themselves. Um this slide, obviously, I'm going to talk more about the new right because I talked about the others on the on the previous slide. But in the new right, again, you've got this atomistic, self-reliant approach. You know, human beings are more off by by nature. But I keep going back to the question: are far more independent, far more capable of making decisions for themselves. Um, therefore, what does this lead to? A free market approach um, in terms of capitalism and a meritocracy. Therefore, there is a much more ideological approach to human nature and society. I'm not saying do this in one paragraph, you can split this out. But therefore, there is a much smaller state than traditional conservatives. So see how I've started with human nature there, about us being kind of more independent from one each other, much more, much more self-reliant, much more rational, much more capable of doing things for myself. And therefore, I've shown how this leads to lots of kind of differences um, in, in outcome. Okay, so hopefully that gives you lots of ideas of the kind of things that you could bring into this particular essay. Remember, of course, in ideologies, in ideologies, you must bring in both agreements and disagreements. You cannot just say, look, they, they flat out disagree throughout. You need agreements and disagreements, and you need, need a, a line, an overall line of direction. If you struggle with these, then you can just go down a more simple conclusion of, look, overall there is more disagreement. Or look, overall there is more agreement, that's fine. But if you can, really get to grips with it and with the different threads and kind of say, well, actually, most of the disagreements happen just with this one thread of ideology. And broadly speaking, there are fundamental agreements between the between the other types. Or you could actually make an essay here. And I, I'm saying or because the, you know there, there should never be just one way, to, one way to write an essay. Or you could go down the route and say, look, ultimately there's loads of disagreements. You could point out here, look, that the one nation disagrees. Or, or at least develops the view from traditional. And you could actually kind of say, make an argument that says broadly, actually, there's just lots of disagreements about human nature uh, within conservatism, especially as it kind of develops over time. You could bring in the kind of historical aspect. You can talk about how different thinkers are alive at different time periods and therefore their views on human nature's change and therefore there's disagreements. You know, Hobbes is alive at the Civil War. Burke is alive at the french revolutions and the american revolutions you've got oakshot who's kind of post world war one you've got arn rand and nozick who are alive when the economy is kind of failing in the 1970s you know you can you can put you can base these thinkers in the context of where they're living and then talk about how that then impacts and um, what they think about human nature there's 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 lots of fun things and directions that you can kind of go as long as you can fit it into the um all exciting clock which will always be ticking against you in the example if you found this video useful then please give it a like uh, if you enjoy the style of teaching then please um, subscribe to the channel and hopefully i'll see you on another video soon bye bye